Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix, and this is the 2024 Acura TLX Type S. This is a very fun, sporty four-door sedan that has quite a few German competitors and an American competitor as well. You're looking at the Urban Gray, which is a new color for this year. It is a clear coat metallic. There are two new colors. This one was a $600 upgrade. I think it's worth it because I think this color is really impressive. It almost has a flip floppy look to it where it's gray, but the metallic is heavy. Really a pretty color. There are some changes for this year. You've got more screens that are larger. You have a head up display and some other improvements along the way. And we'll show you. Let's get started with the front end because I think there's some really interesting facts about the TLX Type S that you wanna know. One of the first things you're gonna note is the athletic lines of the TLX. Now it's designed to direct airflow for maximum performance. You'll note that low front lower splitter generates downforce that gives you far more traction. And the open surface diamond pentagon grill, well that feeds more air as well. Even these air ducts have purpose. They not just flow air, but they're about controlling the air, which means it gives you better control of the vehicle. The jeweled LED headlights are really bright at night, but they don't blind oncoming traffic because they're LEDs. Really impressive quality at night. If you don't like the lighting on your current sports sedan, you wanna check out the lighting on this vehicle. You also find that there is an underbody spoiler that is really good about controlling the air because airflow isn't just on top, it's also under the vehicle. And smooth airflow reduces lift, which gives you better traction to the ground. One of the new color tones I'm noticing are these copper alloy wheels. Really cool. Some people call them gold, some people call them bronze, but Acura calls them copper. They're on 255, 35, 20 Michelin Pilot 4S tires. Really sticky so you can have a great time on the track. Also, standard Brembo brakes, four piston all the way around. You need go power, but you also need woe power, and Brembo does make some of the best brakes in my opinion, and I've been in the brake business for over 30 years. Looking at the profile of this vehicle, you'll notice that Type S right here. That just means you've got the performance version, but I really like how they have a lot of matte black, a little bit of gloss. Also, the mirror covers are black on top, body color on the bottom, I think a carbon fiber one would look cool. I'm told you can get those in the over-the-counter parts. There's also a sunroof on this vehicle, and the body lines on this are much like that of its direct competitors, which we will cover at the end. When it comes to the warranty, you're at six years, 70,000 mile warranty for the powertrain, or four years, 50,000 miles on the warranty. But this also includes a maintenance package of two years or 24,000 miles, so that'll help lower your overall budget costs of owning this vehicle. Coming around to the back of this vehicle, there is more aerodynamic add-ons that really make a difference. Starting with airflow, this rear spoiler in gloss black keeps the rear end down, which gives you better traction. Controlling the air is the key to getting the best handling of any vehicle. You'll also see the TLX logo here, the super handling all-wheel drive, which means all four wheels driven, and one of the best systems that's on the market. You'll also see the Type S here, dual quad exhaust. I really like these big throaty exhaust pipes as well as a rear diffuser, which really makes the difference. You can see this car really stands out in the crowd, and if you pull up behind one, you're gonna go, okay, this is a sports sedan, much like that of the competitors. I really like the clarity of this camera. Some of the backup cameras are not this clear, but this is really nice. You can see the details, and there goes a police officer coming from behind. You can see that pretty clear through the backup camera, and that's important. Going into the interior, this vehicle seats five people, and their performance-focused ultra suede trim helps keep you gripped to the seat. It really does make a difference, or you can get leather seating surfaces. It's your choice. And there's also a cool orchid color. Going into the second row, I'm 5'8", and this seat is set for me. And I'll, it's a little tight. There is a pocket behind each of the seats. But you know what? By the way, all of these sports sedans are really tight in the second row. So if you've got child safety seats back here and this holds two, remember that you don't want to get kicked in the back. So try your child safety seat. Put your kids here. See if it works because there's nothing more frustrating than getting kicked. Uh, behind the center console's two vents and, of course, two USB-C connections. Behind here, the third seating, there's two cup holders and a little bit of storage. These seats do not recline, but they're a pretty nice, comfortable, supportive second row, much like that of the competitors. 
In front of you, you will find the 12.3 inch Acura Precision Cockpit, which is a digital instrument cluster. And there is a lot of great features. On the right side of the steering wheel is a little dial and you can change the information to what you want from the safety support, which you can change. On the right gauge pod, on the right side of the steering wheel, it matches a little dial. You turn that dial, it goes from your safety systems, which you can adjust to nothing or seat belts, your driver attention level, your G meter, your super handling all wheel drive and how the torque is changing from corner to corner, your tire pressure information, which is really good to have, your maintenance information and your navigation. You set it up however you want, including the trip computer. And again, that'll go through that whole list you see on the right, those little dots allow you all the different options. On the left side, you'll see not just the tachometer, but as I change the drive mode to sport, normal, comfort, or you turn and hold and it goes into Sport Plus. So that changes there as well as in that 12.3 inch center screen. I do like the nice grippy steering wheel and the red stitching that matches the interior of the vehicle. It looks really nice and of course those paddle shifters. Stocks are what you would expect from an Acura if you've been in one before. And the steering wheel has all the controls that are pretty easy to understand. On the left side of the steering wheel, you have your head-up display for brightness as well as adjustment. I really like it there because a lot of the competitors don't have that. The head-up display is 10.5 inches in size. It's really nice, easy to read. The center screen is 12.3 inches and comes with a really nice premium audio system. Navigation, Sirius XM, FM, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto are standard, very important. And you've got your smart shortcuts if you want to set those up and your system updates and that split screen. Now all of this is controlled by a mouse pad, which I'm not a big fan of, but you have AM radio, your Alexa, what's built in, your Acura Link, as well as your AT&T hotspot and your ambient lighting. When it comes to ambient lighting, there are 24 different colors that you can choose. Again, that is something that people really like so that they can make it personalized, which I think is kind of neat. Going further down below that center stack, your emergency switch, you've got your heated and three-stage ventilated seats, or you can make them automatic, which I really like. In the center, you have your shifter as well as your dynamic modes, so your different drive modes. The auto idle off, your brake hold is there as well. Really easy to use, and personally, I have no problem with the shifter being in the center. It makes it really easy to use. And then, what I don't like, this is my one big negative, is this mouse pad. Now, I know a lot of people love it, and I'm sure you're gonna comment, but this to me is very frustrating. Either give me a touch screen and buttons, but this doesn't necessarily work for me. Volume is there as well as the fast forward. Your armrest is here, wireless charging, cup holders, and of course gotta have my Monster Energy. And then into that nice size center console in that beautiful red leather is even more storage with a USB-C and a USB-A. And so there's two different charge ports, lots of charging. On the side of the center console is also a charger for the radar detector or whatever you might need. But overall, the features are really nice, clean, soft, love the red stitching, and I love the combination of the red and black. It wasn't too much, it wasn't in your face, it was really nicely done, very modern and very classy. Overall, the interior is nice, big improvement. Under the hood of the Acura TLX, the non-Type S, it's good to know the differences. It's a two-liter VTEC turbocharged engine with 272 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. Standard is front-wheel drive. You can get it in the super handling all-wheel drive backed by a 10-speed automatic transmission with a fuel economy at 24 miles to the gallon. Now, our Type S, our test vehicle, is a 3-liter turbocharged V6 with 355 horsepower, 354 pound-feet of torque, standard super handling all-wheel drive, standard 10-speed automatic transmission, no manual option, 0 to 60, 4.6 seconds, fuel economy, 21 miles to the gallon combined. All right, we covered the engine specs on the Type S and we know the zero to 60 time is 4.6 seconds, which is really good and right in that sweet spot with the competitors. One of the first things you're gonna note when you put this vehicle into the Sport Plus mode, which is my favorite mode, of course you can drive in Sport or Normal, there's four different drive modes plus individual, you can make it any way you want, is you immediately hear the exhaust note, which you would expect, but everything tightens up. The shift points change everything. And now you have this adaptive suspension that has been updated. The adaptive damper system definitely changes all the handling, all the shock points, and you can feel the difference in the vehicle immediately.
put your foot in it. Instant performance, which is what we like. Uh, definitely, you gotta look at the competitors. The G70, which I just reviewed on our channel. The Audi S4, the BMW uh, 3 Series, the M, also the four, if you want a two door or a four door. And one of the things I really like about this vehicle is the exhaust note, which I think is really important when you're buying a vehicle like this. But also the fact that it actually changes when you put on the adaptive suspension. Some have minimal changes. The Germans are really good about giving you definitive changes and Acura has done the same thing. Really made it a nice vehicle. Really nice instant pickup, which I think is important, but just the quickness of this car, the way it handles, is very much designed for a racetrack. Now, the person who's in charge of all this is a guy named John Akito, who I've met, who believes that every car should be tested at the Nürburgring. I kind of like that theory. And, and you can see that right away in this car. This was tested on a racetrack. They didn't just put a bunch of stuff on a car and say it's great. Testing a vehicle on a track tells you, the buyer, that the brand is serious about performance. Now remember, Honda and Acura do have a pretty serious racing history with a lot of winning cars. And I think that's also really says a lot when they used to say, race on Sunday, sell on Monday, Acura and Honda have proved that to be actually the way things are. Consumers see the car on the track, they see how it performs, they know that you've taken that tr information and transferred it over. You've seen that from Porsche, Ferrari, BMW, Audi, Mercedes, etc., etc. So I, I think that this is one of the brands that you should always keep your eye on when it comes to Acura because they're not giving up sedans, which I think is also really important. All the safety features are standard on the Acura. It's called Acura Watch. And that includes the fact that you get the lane departure warning and you can shut it all off. You can go through the steering wheel. There's a setting. The button is here on the left side. You can also access it through the steering wheel and shut off things that I personally don't care for, but a lot of people do the lane departure warning. I do like forward collision warning. I like the, the blind spot detection. All those things are really good, but I think these are things that consumers want to adjust to their personal tastes. As there are steps closer and closer to autonomy, we're not gonna see autonomous cars in the near future. I'm also a big fan of the head-up display in this car. A lot of times there'll be a head-up display and to access the brightness or the height of it, you have to go through quite a few different screens. Not on the Acura, it's right here on the left side. You just press the button, you can adjust the head-up display, you can adjust the tilt, so, and that's good. And the information can be adjusted as well. I like head-up displays. If you don't like them, I'm curious, you can put that down in the comments below, but personally for me, I, I think it's a plus. The fact that this vehicle can be driven in the comfort mode or the, you know, and just drive it every day as a normal daily driver, but then when you want to put it on the track, and yes, this car is track worthy without a question. And I'm not just talking the zero to 60 time of four or six, I'm talking about the overall handling, its ability when you go into Sport Plus to shut off some of those nannies so that you can actually enjoy a spirited drive on a track. The thing is, this has a lot of different meters that you can change. You've got your G meter here in front of you. Accelerometers are always great to have. All this different thing. And again, I, the lane departure warning drives me crazy. But as far as this vehicle overall, paddle shifters, drop it down a gear, it just wants to go. Really easy to drive, really easy to park. And making this your sole vehicle, I don't think you would be disappointed. Remember, this is super handling all wheel drive. This is not just you know a front wheel drive car. Yeah, you can buy it in front wheel drive if you wanna buy just a regular TLX. But when you jump into the super handling all wheel drive or the Type S, which is my favorite, and they offer the Type S and the MDX and, and in some of their other vehicles, you can really see the difference right away that this vehicle is designed for a performance oriented driver. When it comes to cargo space, there is 13.5 cubic feet of storage. There is no spare tire, but this is much the same as you see in the competitors. I picked up this vehicle at the airport. There was plenty of room for my laptop case and two large pieces of luggage. We're here at the Amelia Island Concours. I'm one of the judges. So this is a chance to bring all of our gear for the week, not just camera gear, but also clothing and plenty of storage space that could make this your daily driver.
When it comes to pricing, I want to at least get you started with what the TLX price point is without the Type S. You're looking at about $45,000. That's a front wheel drive car. If you want to add in that super handling all wheel drive, the A-Spec package, you're going to come in at $50,000. But the Type S is not that much more, which makes this make a lot of sense. Type S, full performance, all the aero pieces, all the extra things that you want in a car is $57,000. This vehicle only had a few options. Carpeted floor mats and $600 for the paint came in at just under $59,000. Pretty impressive price when you look at the competitors and that list is long and you start to see what they're charging is they upcharge you for every single item. It's sort of like bigging the fries at McDonald's. Oh, we just got to price it up, price it up, and suddenly you don't get all the safety, you don't get all the technology you want. The list of competitors is long. The Genesis G70, which I recently drove and I mentioned in the on drive. Also, the Audi S4. Of course, you can get an RS4, but that's a completely different vehicle. Now you're looking at the BMW 3 or 4 Series. You can get that with an M package or Mercedes-Benz C-Class. You can get that with an AMG package. And don't forget the Cadillac CTS-V. So they've got their own vehicles as well, both two doors and four doors. Great vehicles. We reviewed them all on our channel. You want to check that out. Now let's take a look at the pros and cons list for the Type S. I took some notes during my drive for the week, and this is what I really thought about this vehicle. It is the quickest, best handling all-wheel drive sedan for the price point. Absolute great bargain and a vehicle that will have resale value without a question. Also, I like the Retune Sport Plus package. It really has more improved th throttle response than the previous generation, so that is a major plus for this vehicle. On the negative side, there really wasn't much other than I wish there was more legroom in the back. I got stuck in the back seat when we went to dinner because two tall guys decided to be up front which is fine, but I'm 5'8", so it was a bit tight back there. And also, I'm still not a fan of that little touchpad screen. And I know that Honda has updated their interface, and maybe in the next generation, TLX will get rid of that silly little thing. I know Acura loves it. Some people love it, some people hate it. To me, I find it frustrating. I want to be able to touch the screen or use a button, either one. But again, that is a personal choice, and if you're okay with that, then there are no negatives for this vehicle because it really is quite an impressive piece. Now, I'm sure you have additional questions when it comes to the Acura TLX Type S. Put them down in the comments below. If you own one of these vehicles, you're a true fan, I'd like to know. If you bought one of the competitors, I'd also be interested in starting that conversation so people can make great choices. If you'd like to support our channel, you can buy me a cup of coffee or just stay just a few seconds longer and have another way for you to save a lot of money. I do appreciate your support. You can reach me through all my social media. All the links are in the description. We appreciate your support. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm Lauren Fix. Thanks so much for watching. Have you ever thought, why in the world is my wireless bill so darn high? What are we paying all this money for? Speed, coverage, data, access to 5G, unlimited talk and text, mobile hotspots? We are partnering with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers all of these features for as low as $15 per month. They're reimagining the wireless shopping experience and made it easy and online. No stores, no salespeople, just huge direct to you savings. Why should you pay more when you have access to premium wireless? Mint Mobile runs on the nation's largest 5G network. Whether you use your phone to watch YouTube, listen to podcasts or play games, you get the same speed and performance as the big guys while connecting to Mint's network. How hard is it to switch your service? Big Wireless wants you to think it's hard, but switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to digital e-SIM cards, which most phones now have, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home. And if your phone doesn't have an e-SIM, Mint will ship you a new SIM card for free. Just go to trymintmobile.com slash Lauren Fix, also linked in the description down below, to get premium wireless for $15 a month.